Welcome to today's episode that focuses on lifestyle medicine. And we're going to be visited by Dr. Firemilk. I have a few questions for her. And we're going to see her in a moment. But first I wanted to level the playing field off here so that we're all on the same page when it comes to talking about lifestyle medicine and the value of lifestyle medicine. You see, lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based approach to preventing, treating, and even reversing diseases by replacing unhealthy habits with healthy habits in specific areas. When we talk about lifestyle medicine, it has a lot to do with behavior change, with the change that we have in our lives from behaviors that are not contributing positively to our health. Not all of us respond to, to the same actions and behaviors as the next person. So we have to keep in mind that we're all individuals. However, in every individual, we can optimize our lifestyle behaviors as lifestyle medicine to help decrease our risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and so on. Nutrition is often considered the foundation of lifestyle medicine because foods can trump all. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine states that choose whole plant-based foods and those that are fiber-filled, nutrient-dense, ones that are health-promoting and disease-fighting. Avoid high-sugar foods. Try to avoid fatty foods. Try to stick with protein sources that are lean meat, fish, or poultry, or legumes that are dense in protein. So choosing healthy foods can have a significant impact on your overall health and well-being and could be, for you, one of the most important parts of your lifestyle medicine. Oh, <laughs> sleep, we're on sleep. You know, the value and importance of sleep is often underestimated. It's so important. And it's one of those components in lifestyle medicine that we cannot overlook. Now, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine states that lack of or poor quality sleep can lead to decreased ability to recover um, from an illness. It can also uh, put a, uh, a strain on our immune system and lead to chronic disease and you know, not allow us to prevent or reverse chronic disease. So let's not forget about the value of sleep. All right, let's talk about stress and stress management. You know, stress, there's a positive and the negative to stress. And the American College of Lifestyle Medicine very clearly states that stress can either lead to improved health and productivity or to anxiety, depression, obesity, immune dysfunction, and poor health outcomes. Hmm. We all have stress in our lives and finding a way to manage them and um, confront them in a positive way and have techniques can really help our overall health. And it kind of intertwines with many other things that we do. So don't forget about stress management. <sighs> tobacco. What can I say? Bad. Don't do tobacco. Tobacco has no great effects that are going to be positive. I'm not even going to say anymore. No tobacco. Exercise, physical activity, another solid component of lifestyle medicine. And as it's stated very clearly, regular and consistent physical activity that's maintained on a daily basis throughout your life is important to you. And like Dr. Firemuck says very often, use it or lose it. And it's so true. Our bodies respond, am respond amazingly to physical activity. Our muscular strength, our cardiovascular fitness, our flexibility. We just have to put some time into it. So take the time when it comes to physical activity. Find something you'd like. Meet the standards that are 30 minutes a day of cardiovascular, moderate to high cardiovascular activity. But also don't forget strength training. Strength is another area that can help you in all areas of life. And strength is something we are happy to help you with as we, we go through this program and try to leverage as many things in our lifestyle as we can to use lifestyle as medicine. The value of relationships is a very important component of lifestyle medicine. A lot of support comes from that connectedness that we have. 
So when it comes to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, they state that social connectedness is essential to our emotional resiliency and our overall health. There's been multiple studies that show impacts on morbidity and mortality. So don't overlook the value of the relationships that you have and get social. Okay, there's many components to lifestyle medicine. It has to do with our healthy behaviors and how they impact our health and well-being, decreasing risk, uh, treating, preventing, um, and um, promoting a positive health in our lives. And so the next question I would have and I would pose, and I'd like to pose this to Dr. Firemouth, is how she sees lifestyle medicine fitting in to optimal health and how it fits into this decreased risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and our increased quality of life. So let's go ask her and see what she has to say. All right, Dr. Firemilk, we have a, a question for you. What is the value of lifestyle medicine in your program, in how you view your treatment and your prevention plans of patients? I'm your cardiologist but I cannot out-prescribe your lifestyle. Whatever you can do to meet me halfway with your lifestyle means I don't have to put so many supplements in your mouth and I don't have to give you too many prescriptions. So we need to try to maximize your lifestyle medicine. This means paying attention to your physical activity, paying attention to good nutrition, paying attention to your sleep, paying attention to your oral health. What happens in your mouth does not stay in your mouth. Paying attention to body composition, paying attention to stress reduction. All of those things are so important. I don't want to give you drugs for those. I want you to take care of those things as much as you possibly can. When it comes to the lab testing and all that testing, why is that important in this whole process and how it fits into the lifestyle medicine picture? As you know, we're very into measurables in our practice. Every time you walk in the door, we're trying to measure something. And once a year, we measure everything. <laughs> so we want to be able to use these objective endpoints to prove to you that we're healing the insides of your arteries. So if lifestyle is the best medicine, and I'm just using supplements and prescription to assist with that, we can then go to your labs, your specialty labs that you do quarterly, to see how good of a job are we doing along the way. So that's great. So you're saying that you back up your recommendations with evidence? One of the joys for me is I never have to say to somebody, walk 30 minutes a day, eat the salmon, um, re reduce your red meat, without being able to prove it to you as a patient in your lab work that it's effective. I know there's a number of cutting edge tests uh, that you order with your labs. Can you tell us some of those? On your labs, we have many things to measure lifestyle. We have the happy heart hormone. We have the lifestyle lie detector test. We have the red meat lie detector test. There's different things that we can use in your labs to prove to you that lifestyle is working. You're a pioneer in prevention and being proactive. And your experience, your expertise, and your methodology are second to none. And I've heard you talk about genetics and lifestyle medicine and some interaction. Can you explain your views on that? None of us have 100% perfect genes. None of us have 100% perfect lifestyles. So I can fill in the gaps along the way, but whatever you can do to optimize your lifestyle is better for your overall health. And then I don't have to do so much with drugs. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? There's no judgments here. But let us continue to nudge you, to hound you just a little bit, to try to optimize lifestyle medicine as much as possible so that when I sit down with you at your appointments with me, I can show you on your specialty labs exactly where you've succeeded with that.